after we've done the warm up, uh, we're ready to start thinking about doing some measurements inside the cabin. Um, and it's important just to mention that uh, the purposes of doing quality assurance can be varied. So it depends on how the unit is used clinically. So for example, if the unit is used using the onboard dosimeters, and you'll see inside this particular cabin, you've got some onboard sensors, which happen to be at knee height here. Other cabin types vary, you might have roof uh, high sensors. But regardless, what we're doing is we're taking a measurement where we're comparing the measurement on the patient's skin with the measurement that the onboard dosimetry is displaying here. It could also be um, that the cabin is run without the onboard sensors and you just set in the time only mode, in which case the purpose of the quality assurance is really going to be about providing a factor that you can use to work out how long the treatments have got to be based on the irradiance measurement at the patient's skin. the irradiance value here that the cabin's measured. The final thing to point out with uh, quality assurance is just about measuring uniformity within the cabin as well because obviously we want to make sure that the patient is receiving a uniform irradiance regardless of which size they're on, uh, which side they're on. Uh, the onboard dosimeters are just looking at the front of the cabin or just looking at the back of the cabin. Can we Quite useful just to mention that if you are just starting out doing UV quality assurance then this is really the paper that you need to reference. It's a 2015 paper, uh, guidelines on the measurement of UV levels in ultraviolet phototherapy. Uh, something else to consider when you're uh, setting up your quality assurance program is uh, the frequency of testing. And there are a number of uh, different ways of deciding how often you're going to test your cabins. Uh, for example, some people test according to the number of hours that uh, the clinic has run the cabin for. Um, and one figure that's used is 50 hours. So you should uh, repeat your testing every 50 hours that the cabin has been on for. Other centres may test monthly, bi-monthly or quarterly or sometimes even six monthly. Uh, really that's for each individual centre to decide how often they think they need to uh, test their uh, cabins uh, and their hand and foot units for. Uh, the IPEM or the NICE guidelines I believe suggest that you shouldn't let a, a change in performance of more than 20% go unnoticed. So as long as you're within that kind of ballpark uh, then that should be okay. We've decided that we are going to do um, the direct measurement. We've uh, got someone properly gowned up Obviously the um, eight hour UV dose limit applies to any part of the skin or eyes. So we need to make sure that we are properly covered up on the arms and also the other place that we're likely to have a gap is going to be under here. And then we've got a double protection. So we've got the eyes and then we've got the visor covering the face as well. So once we're ready to go into the cabin, you can open up the door and our volunteer can step inside. And there's various ways of doing this. You can either just do a measurement at waist height, being careful not to shield the front of the detector. So we would hold the meter off to the side slightly and make sure that we're not covering the cosine diffuser with our fingers or anything else. We would then want to make various measurements going around the cabin. So once we've started, our volunteer would start to turn around and do measurements on the side and on the back. If you follow a different technique, you could use the technique recommended by the Scottish uh, UV guidelines, and you could do measurements also on the shoulders and knee height as well. <clears throat> it would be really a two person job to do this, but as I said, it's not recommended, um, but the second person would be responsible for closing the door, checking that the person is happy in the cabin, and then just confirming one last time that we've properly covered up the occupant before we start the UV. Okay. After the QA, we can let them back out of the cabin. Okay. 
Just to continue with the direct method, while we've got somebody in the cabin, it's obviously important to have a second person on the outside who's going to be uh, recording the values that are going to be shouted out from inside the cabin. At the same time that those values are shouted out from inside the cabin, we also want to record what the irradiance on the cabin onboard sensors are going to be. So we've got comparative measurements between the two. Okay, moving on. So we've covered the direct method and we're going to talk about the indirect method now. So the advantage to using the indirect method is that you can, uh, in theory at least, get rid of all of the uh, kind of inconsistencies that you have by either having different people going into the cabin or um, having uh, different PPE on different occasions. And so we can control the situation um, slightly better by using a tripod. The disadvantage being that we don't have the same kind of shadow factor and so the cabin isn't seeing what the patient is actually seeing. So there are advantages and disadvantages too. Obviously the main advantage of using the indirect method is from a safety point of view, there's no risk to anybody going inside the cabin. So if we uh, decide that we want to do the indirect method, so we can use a tripod, much like this one, uh, we can place the tripod inside the cabin and the protocol is that we would try and have uh, the sensor 30 centimetres from the bank of detectors that we're going to be measuring. So most cabins you can pass the cable just underneath and we can quite happily get a measurement on the outside. So in the same way as the uh, direct method we would do a cabin warm-up so we'd run it for three or four minutes and then we would take measurements facing each one of the detector panels and possibly measurements going laterally as well. Okay, so once we've finished and we've collected all of our irradiance uh, measurements from the indirect method, we have to think about how we're actually going to apply that. Um, and what we need to consider is the direct to indirect ratio. So at least at some point, we've got to have a way of seeing what sort of factor we need to apply to get our indirect measurements to be relevant to a patient being in the cabin. Does that have to be via the direct measurement method or could a phantom be used? A phantom could be used. Um, most people don't have a phantom, so it's got to be decided locally according to your risk assessment how you're going to go into the cabin or put something into the cabin to give you that ratio between your direct and indirect method. 